The Politics, Politics, Politics program is brought to you, as always, by patreon.com slash J-U-R-Y. This is the way I do the show, folks. Uh, you, you you give me money and I keep talking. We, we bump this thing from one day a week to uh, three days a week, and now you want to know what? It's not just your old buddy Justin talking into the can anymore. No, he's bringing other people on to prove that he indeed does have friends. So... Go ahead and support my effort. Please, be the father that I never had and recognize me when I'm trying hard. Patreon.com slash J-U-R-Y is where you can do just that. Also, uh, uh, thecontender.us, uh, before our, our design uh, half of our quartet left for Mexico for an extended sabbatical, they made these awesome Contender logo pins, these, these lapel pins. Uh, we were going to just use them internally, but I thought they were so rad that uh, I just put them on sale today. So if you want to buy them, go ahead and get them. There's not a lot of them, so if, if you like the way they look, go ahead and get them now. Go to bit.ly slash voting pin. Again, bit.ly slash voting pin. But enough of talking about how we pay for the show. What do you say we go ahead and do the, the show itself? Politics, 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 politics. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Friday edition of the Politics, Politics, Politics podcast. As promised, we are we are doing guests now. Look at this. It's not just a one mic show. We have guests on. Joining me is uh, somebody that many of you uh, who, who watched when I was part of the coverage for BitTorrent News for the Republican and Democratic National Conventions will recognize his lovely face. He is Michael Shore. Uh, I, I guess, I mean, uh, colleagues, maybe? I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. No, I mean, um, one-time colleagues, <laughs> once and future colleagues, maybe. I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, it's a confusing thing, uh, what's going on um, over there. I mean, I, you know, I guess they're figuring things out, which they're allowed to do, but... Uh, I don't know. You'll always be my colleague. But exactly. Uh, you will. You will. You will always be. Uh, I, I will. I will. I will always uh, treasure you uh, as a friend. So uh, uh, we are here now. Nobody can stop this. No corporate shakeup. No. No. No twin CEO firings can keep us from having these conversations <laughs> right. exactly here right. on my yeah, podcast. Yeah. Uh, so you want to know what? Uh, this is really what I've been kind of dying to talk to you about since the conventions is. Mm -hmm. I feel like, well, I, I don't even know what to ask because my broader conversation is I, I just kind of want other, uh, uh, you know, perspectives on kind of the postmortem of this election. You are somebody that certainly has an eye toward history and, and, and understanding where things kind of fit in context uh, with, you know, presidential elections in general. This certainly has been one of the most, you know, outlier elections I can remember or, or in my mild understanding of presidential history can can put into context. So I guess let's start there. Where does this fit in the larger context of presidential elections? Well, listen, I mean, I can only speak to the ones that in sort of that I've lived through and in recent history know and have studied, which probably starts, you know, in earnest with with the 1948 election, uh, you know, the, I started learning about Dewey defeats Truman, which may, yeah. in fact, you know, many in the Trump camp are hoping is the type of headline they see on. Yes, on the they, they're, they're hoping that a triumphant Trump uh, holds up the newspaper Hillary cucks Trump and, and they will they will <laughs> uh, stuff it right back in the Democratic uh, uh, opposition's which face. Exactly. So I, I think that, you know, so in, in the pantheon of, of those elections, this, you know, there's nothing like this. There hasn't been because it's based, obviously, I mean, we're repeating the obvious, but it's one candidate and that race and the primary race he ran, ran as well. And the number of people that ran, 17 people ran for the Republican nomination. And this is what came out of it. And so I think that makes it uh, on its own just sort of without precedent. But, you know, and, and the topsy-turvy moment-to-moment -moment changes that both social media and the the kind of the zeitgeist of the Trump campaign have created make this unlike anything else we've, uh, we've seen. So let's stay on this for a second, because I think we've seen both sides of this dynamic. Are you surprised that this election 
pretty much from pillar to post, from from the moment where Megyn Kelly is asking questions at that first Republican debate in Cleveland right. to this second as we as, as we talk to each other, that this has remained a referendum on Donald Trump on some level. Like this, this has yeah. in, in primary oh. and uh, a general election, you would have thought at some point somebody, either Trump himself when it wasn't in his favor or another candidate when it was in Trump's favor, would have made this about something other than one guy. Well, you know, Bernie Sanders tried to make it a referendum on Hillary Clinton. Uh, yeah. To agree, although he came with ideas and plans, he tried to make it about Hillary Clinton. And because Donald Trump is who he is, it, it kind of emasculated the Republicans in making it about a referendum on Clinton. So by default, it became about Trump because of who he is. So I'm not surprised now because we're so used to it. I, you know, I was at that debate, uh, that first debate, and the way it kind of, you know, from the very first question, as you said, we we saw this. Uh, the, no, of course, nobody there could have predicted that Trump would have gotten the nomination on that day in 2015. But yeah, there was something different about this election from that very moment, and that has stayed consistent. But again, you know, I mean, the the, the October surprises. There've been, you know, they started in September and they've gone through to to right now, where the FBI is reopening the case on the emails. Uh, the ABC News Politics reporting that. Everybody's reporting it now. It's not. Uh, it's not just a right wing excitement machine. No, so this could be. The although, although we are, we are at one siren. Let let let's just let, let let's go ahead and just just make, take a look. You know, for posterity, we are at one siren gif on on the Drudge Report. So uh, uh, for those uh, for those who track such things, we we are currently at one gif. One gif right now. Surprising it's only one, uh, because this is kind of the moment they've been waiting for nine days or 10 days before the election. So uh, I, I think that uh, it's it's you know, this is this is what they've wanted. And and um, and this is the this is the typical October surprise. I mean, not this specific one, but just the fact that this could be uh, happening now. This is what they talk about when they talk about October surprises. We've just become inured to them because they happen all the time in this election. So let me we'll we'll, we'll get back to kind of the, the, the Trump phenomenon because i think that there's there's obviously this is not something that will stop being unpacked on this podcast this is something that people will be looking at and studying i think for right. years and years uh but let's get into to the 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 riches of october surprises for which we've gotten because yeah i almost feel like number one there have been so many that our taste buds are kind of even worn out for them and specifically it seems as if in energy, not only by voters, but by the media, that everything kind of crested at that Billy Bush grab him by the pussy tape because that was so kind of beyond the pale, so yeah. uh, 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 crazy that now even when other things that I think in another election would have certainly at least caused ripples, would have at least been like potholes in the road for a well-run campaign uh, are, are are just non-existent uh, because it's hard to match a candidate in his own words talking yeah. about sexual assault and then having the Tiger Woods parade of, of women come out and, and, and uh, uh, corroborate it. Wow, is poor Tiger still in charge of that parade? I thought Cosby would have taken over the Grand Marshal uh position in that parade that's I a hope. fair that's a fair point I, I guess yeah it is it is a little different uh, although although along with uh, uh, a tiger you you know that you've kind of gotten to the end of it when 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 the porn star shows up and, and not to to denigrate yeah. anybody's uh, uh you know position right. or anything but that's usually the sign that we have come to the end but uh but do you do you feel that as well that there's just this this kind of like sagging of of attention and energy sort of post that and and, and post the debates yeah, I, I mean, I do, but I think this that listen. When you get into the last ten days, and you have someone as dynamic as Trump, he wired ten more million dollars into his campaign, uh, which is still thirty-four million short of the hundred million he said he was going to put in. <laughs> this isn't going to stop. It's not. It's not that that this this race has already been. Uh, you know, I I've predicted how it's going to end for a long time. But the, the you know now with these FBI allegations, can Donald Trump actually make this? about these emails or does he is it still going to be donald trump centric the whole way and so there are things about it we don't know but yeah i i would you know i do agree that the die has been cast in a way so there are two moments if we're if we're going to look at the trend lines of 
uh, the national numbers, uh, which on some level inform the state numbers that actually decide who becomes president, yeah. that Hillary Clinton sagged. One was uh, uh, Director Comey from the FBI coming out and although not pressing charges, not recommending to press charges, does directly contradict things that Hillary Clinton has said in public. And then there was the Republican National Convention, which uh, obviously those conventions uh, give X amount of bounce on either side, and Hillary right. Clinton a week later wound up having a larger one. Uh, but is is this the silver bullet? I mean, like, in, in an election where anything can happen, is, is this specific thing the thing that, that that maybe Donald Trump can, you know, focus on for more than five seconds? Uh, I mean, it's hard to say yes. Um, I, if you say yes now, I, I'm going to say yes, because if I'm wrong, everybody's been wrong. I'll just be another one of the billions that have been <laughs> wrong. But if I'm right, people say, ah, Michael Schur got that. Uh, yeah. So I guess, yes, he can focus on this for 10 days. He when there's something about Hillary Clinton when he is able to to sort of push the crooked Hillary narrative, then I think it works for him. The problem is I don't know what voters are out there to attract. There may be some Clinton voters or people that came to her slowly that are are you know dissuaded by this news. But I, I don't know what how he builds his the majority that he needs in order to win. I don't know how he does, and I've said this for a long time. I don't know how Donald Trump does better than Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney lost. You have to do better than Mitt Romney. And yeah. I don't see what he does it, you know. It also seems a little close, right? I mean, because like, like it's, it's, it's... These sorts of things. I mean, if, if, if you have undecided, Justin, it's like this is when they make their break, right? I mean, a lot of voters break, a lot of independent... We're already seeing Gary Johnson and voters sort of that, that number dwindling because yeah. they're for a candidate uh, apparently it. including bill weld who is just out here giving yeah. uh you know interviews about how hey don't worry don't vote for me if it means donald trump gets elected which is uh, uh just kind of uh you know geez uh, yeah. talk about the people you want in a foxhole like <laughs> totally. totally uh all right so what is the most surprising thing you've seen in this election since the conventions well i mean i Listen, the easy answer is that tape. The, um, I would say the debates themselves, um, how unprepared Donald Trump was. There's a lot of preparation that goes into debating Hillary Clinton that's easy. I mean, she's a fairly easy person to debate uh, because there's so much fodder over such a long time. He was totally unprepared, and I thought that was where he was going to try and make his move. And you know, to that extent, I found that very, very surprising. Secondly, uh, I think some of the states that are now in play surprised me. The fact that Georgia and, and Iowa are as close, I mean, Georgia on its own, as close as it is, that Iowa is close, that a third party candidate in Utah may actually win that state. Uh, that, that sort of stuff surprising to me. The map is, is surprising. But just his lack of preparation for those debates, you know, it, it made me think that does he really want it because he was just he just showed up. I mean, where is that that conversation? Because that's something that I get a lot from people that don't necessarily follow. Do too that that you have friends and friends of friends that know that you follow politics or that you work in in, in the political media, right. and and there's always some version of is Donald Trump really running for president or on on the far tinfoil end the. Like, is Donald Trump a sleeper? Is he the Manchurian candidate for, for right. Hillary Clinton that at some, you know, a, a backroom deal at a cocktail party in, in, you know, 2009, this was a plan that was hatched or something like that. But anything to get rid of the bushes, right? That he was just there to get make sure Jeb wasn't president and oh, yeah. he, he stayed for the ride. Yeah, I mean, you, you do hear all of that. And, and I, listen, I, and here's where my sort of dull context of history comes in. When George H.W. Bush ran for re-election in 92 against Clinton, people thought that he didn't. There were, I mean, there was a faction that thought that this guy doesn't want to be president anymore. He's kind of done. He just wasn't into it. But this is but he still I mean, he was a he was president. But B, he came and he showed up and he gave every indication that he wanted to win. And he in the in the waning days of the campaign, he kind of closed the gap and did quite well. This is not really how Donald Trump has operated at all. So you asked for a surprise. I mean, that's really surprising to me because I thought that once that he got a taste of the how close he was to power, 
that it would really motivate him a little more than it had. But he's just doing, he's going to the same audiences, saying the same thing. When he went to Virginia Beach and in North Carolina, but it was mostly Virginia Beach last week, and uh, that same uh, day he was in Johnstown, Pennsylvania after the debate, two states where he's not meant to win, like yeah. the audiences that that are not strong for him, except in Virginia Beach to the military. I, I was so curious as to why he was in those places. Um, and and that to me, I mean, there's just been a so curiously run campaign. Well, curiously runs one way to put it, certainly. And I think that if there's there's one little subsection of uh, uh, a Twitter that has become uh, uh, obsessed on the conservative side of kind of fantasy booking this this, this 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 Trump campaign of like, how would you do things differently? How how small of a of a of a shifting of direction could you turn the Trump campaign that would make things better, different, uh, uh, more uh, responsive? To the world that he is playing to is is kind of this own cottage industry. And here's my theory: uh, if in Cleveland, the chants that had been created and and uh, by the crowd and were were became this hallmark were not lock her up, but drain the swamp, which I think is like the the to me that was like one of those like oh wow that's actually that's an effective little slogan for for Trump. And if Trump runs as this populist let's throw all the bums out you know kind of uh kind of guy i think that's a better brand for him than anything that he's come up with other than that i feel like he would have done a lot better now of course that means he has to keep on message he has to you know say it during the debate when 80 million people are watching uh but do you do you buy that 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 was his best uh the the, the best pathway for him was as this uh, rage against the machine populist yeah, I mean, it was the pathway because it was successful. You have to say that that was, I mean, it worked. So, yeah, I mean, how, who are we to sit here and say that was a bad idea? You know, yeah. because it was it, it, it was what got him where he was going. He was aided by the fact that so many people ran for president. And this, this kind of, he was able to tap into his celebrity, which has worked uh, both in this country and in other countries for a long time. And people say John Ronald Reagan wasn't elected because he was a celebrity, but he was elected governor of California in large part because he was a celebrity. That popular that popularity and that notoriety elevated his candidacy there. And then, of course, as a governor, he went on to then run for president. And so he wasn't elected president because of a celebrity. But I do think that his career started because of America's uh, unusual fascination. I guess it's the world. I'm not I'm not as excited about it, though. I did buy Phil Collins book yesterday. I'm not as excited <laughs> uh, about celebrity as other people are. But but there's no question that his um, that his celebrity kind of propelled him to this spot. And because of that, you get people and I, you know, I'm not saying this. Well, yeah, it doesn't matter how I'm saying this. There are people uh, who are the, the general level of people who are fascinated by and motivated by celebrity uh, doesn't meet with the intellect of a lot of voters. And I think that's probably played into his success as well. But he, you have to say he's done it right. I mean, there's nothing, whatever has worked for him, he's going with. And, you know, he, he happened into um, a couple of pieces of good fortune and and um, and that's kind of been the story of his life as well. And so I think in this election, you know, 11 days left, um, it, there, there's stuff to look at. So you mean that the, the we are operating then at at peak Trump, no matter what, that that he has he has done the best with the tools available and to imagine a world where a Donald Trump is, uh, you know, crafts a message and then sticks with it and, and doesn't go off strip. A, neuters what makes him special, and B, is just an unrealistic. It's like yelling at the clouds to form in yeah, a different formation. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think that's true, but I think there's another thing here. I mean, that, that it, it's you have to look at the the, pot, the the sort of the raw numbers of this, right? Yeah. There's nothing he can say that's going to upset the devout Trump voters, right? And no. it's not just Republicans. And it's nothing, he, nothing that Hillary Clinton can do to win over the really vitriolic Hillary haters. So Trump has to do something in the waning moments, in the winter of this campaign, in order to bring people into his campaign. He's got to raise his numbers. And and I just, I don't, that's what I've had the hardest time seeing uh, all along is where he does that. Where's the geography for that? Where are the numbers? When, in 10 days, can can a reopening of it? I don't think it's a reopening of the investigation. They're just taking another look at some of these emails to see yeah. where they've been. 
Uh, can that change? I don't think that's going to change the dial. I think for a couple of days it might, but I don't think it's going to change this election. So I still don't see where he grows his number, and that's all he has to do to win the presidency. I think that that's, you know, as as I've 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 thought about it in the back processor while doing this amazing interview, I I, I think that that part of this FBI thing, it it just it's going to go for, it's an announcement, right? So unless there's another leak or another announcement that this is happening or what it is indeed focusing on, this is kind of a 24 hour story, right? It's just, uh, well, yeah, but except it's not going to be because he's going to talk about it for the next, you know, for the, for until the eighth or maybe into, until his concession speech, he's going to talk about it. Oh, so, certainly. So, and, and he will stuff came out earlier. And what this also does is it gives Republican Senate candidates um, in these close races, something new to talk about too, which is always the, the thing that's forgotten. This isn't just about Donald Trump, but the Republican Senate, um, is able to hold, then it's going to be, you know, very difficult for Hillary Clinton to get around this stuff for a while. In another election, running against somebody different, how yeah. do these WikiLeaks things, how do these WikiLeaks emails rattle? How, how do these land? Well, you know, listen, if, if you... If you had uh, – I hate these hypotheticals because sure. let's say you had another candidate who wasn't Hillary Clinton or yet let's say – better yet, let's say that another Republican candidate who wasn't Donald Trump was running, right? Yeah. Well, there would have been months of negative campaigning against whoever that person was. So the person – if we close our eyes and look at, oh, John Kasich would be doing much better, the John Kasich that we said goodbye to in May is not the same John Kasich – who you would have seen, uh, you know, on on the ballot now because he would have been a battered John Kasich with lots of opposition research and yeah. mistakes on the campaign trail. So it's not the same quantity that you're dealing with on election day in November that you had in the primary. So it's easy to say pie in the sky. You know, Bernie Sanders would be running, all, you know, roughshod all over Donald Trump. Sure, well, Donald Trump would have for for half a year been battering. And the Republicans battering Bernie Sanders, so it wouldn't be the same Bernie Sanders uh, that we that we saw and loved. So let let me let me rephrase it then. Let's just look in in the in the fantasy baseball sense that right. we have uh, you know standard you know the uh, value over replacement Republican candidate right. right. Hillary Clinton is Hillary Clinton, and uh, uh, these emails start to surface. Like I I I think in in a in a world where we freak out when a presidential candidate doesn't give a good answer to a plumber. Right. Uh, uh, these emails make more of a noise than they have now. Well, it, if you still had Hillary Clinton in a keeper league, by the way, <laughs> I'll tell you what, that was a, that was a good find post 08, man. You have, you, if you, if you have, have you kept uh, Hillary in your keeper league? That was a good snag. Exactly. I mean, this is where you're supposed to be rewarded, right? Yeah. Uh, but I mean, do, do you do you think that these these would have been more damaging? Like that that there's it, it is the uniqueness of of, of Trump's uh, yeah. uh, candidacy. I, I think yes. That I mean, mutes I think it. That, first of all, there wouldn't have been. We talk about October surprise, and and for people who don't know, that is typically in every presidential election. There's been something that's an October surprise where you, there's a bit of news similar to what we've just gotten uh, that changes the course of the election in some way. Certainly changes. The um, the conversation, right? Yeah. This election has given us a surprise almost once a month. So, yeah. it, 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 and that's where it would have been different. Had there been another candidate, this would the October surprise would have had greater impact because there would not have been a September and August, a July and a June surprise. So, uh, to that effect, yes, uh, you know. Uh, so, if it were, yes, there there would also be a party that was organized around a candidate to deal with these things and to press them and to spread them. And, and so I think that would have been, they would have had a lot more backing. And to have, you know, surrogates that, right. you know, say things appropriately and stay on message and know what they're saying and maybe have offices get uh, 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 yard signs and bumper stickers. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah you know, it's, let, let, let's take a look here at, uh, you, you mentioned that, that the big thing that has stuck for you has been understanding where does Donald Trump get to above Mitt Romney? Like, how does he, how does he, like, that was a losing proposition for Mitt Romney. Right. Uh, uh, how does he do that? And, and what you've seen from the Trump campaign 
is, okay, well, here's where the math is. It's in independent voters. It's in blue-collar voters. We're going to take some of the, the blue dog Democrats who, who feel uneasy about where the economy has gone in rural areas, and we're going to turn them into Trump voters. Yeah. Is, I, all right, go ahead. I mean, that's the assignment. Yeah. Exactly. Is there a moral victory for that philosophy in this election if – there is no, even if there is no Trump victory, like, is there somewhere that people who believe in that idea can say, well, you want to know what, but we still did well here and we can build on it if we just don't have the, the, the July through uh, November surprises. If here's the thing, if you ask me, I would say no, but you know, Howard Dean, when he had the 50 state strategy, when he ran the, the DNC, you know, he said it, it made a difference to lose by um, eight in Alabama uh, when the last guy lost by 10. Yeah, um, so I don't see that because I don't see, first of all, the idea is to win. Right. And so when theoretically, you're running a presidential campaign. Yeah, theoretically. But if, if it were the Republicans, they had an honest candidate um, and who wasn't some, you know, anomalous um, figure like Trump. I think they would have sat down and they would have said, listen, we got really close last time here, here and here. Let's make strides in these states um, and, and really work these states and not worry about these states as much, because all we had to do in 2012 was win X, Y and Z. And it would have been a totally different thing. Uh, they didn't get that opportunity this time because of who their candidate was. So uh, I, I think that's really what's been problematic for them. And I, I listen, I, I don't um, I don't think they're going to take themselves as seriously as I take them, um, because I think they're going to look at Trump as being a, a you know, a, a one time one off type thing, which he may have been. But the people that are supporting him are not. And they're still going to be looking for people to vote for. And they're engaged in this thing now. And they weren't maybe four years ago. Not all of them, certainly. But the question is, and we're going to find this out on Election Day, how big of a block is that? And how hard does another, does the, the Republican candidate in four years, assuming that, that Hillary Clinton wins, do they want to chase after them? Yeah, well, they're going to have to because they need them. I mean, that's the problem with the, that the Republican Party has is they can't win majorities without this their fringe. Democrats have proven that you can win a majority and you can become president uh, even by alienating what is perceived as their fringe. And I, I say that only because of what people say. I think there are very there are great differences between how um, the public identifies as the identifies the fringes of both parties, because I think they're very, very different. That's not just my bias. I think there is a real strain that we're seeing in the Trump campaign of racist talk and, and hatred and otherness uh, that you don't see from the left. I mean, the left, um, they're what, what is perceived as their fringes, and I hate saying it, are people who are, you know, and uh, don't work with income inequality or corporatist and, you know, in some cases hawks, but not even that much. They're trying to label Clinton that. So I think the fringes are different, but the Democrats can do well without that part of their party. The Republicans cannot do well without their fringe. So the Republican Party is in a really tough spot because they don't know what to do, Justin. They don't know how to yeah. keep these people involved, you know, but, and they don't want to, but they have to. But that's but it, that's that's more of a of a damnation of not recruiting new voters, right? Like like that that yeah, you you have a you have a map problem now because you have you have gotten to the point where you are you need to appeal to literally anybody who has ever said that they are a Republican at any point. But the point is not to necessarily just have that is to always move and change and evolve and find everybody that could support your cause, right? Yeah, that, that's true. I think I think you're right, uh, and I think that the you know the Republicans are also uh, they they blew it right when when it comes to these new voters and you know of all the years to have a centerpiece of your you know your candidate's platform being that you want to build a wall between here and Mexico and send people out of the country. Well, whoa, whoa, whoa! Here's this bonanza of new voters that you could have had a share of. And even though immigration isn't necessarily their first issue, when they're you know excluded from the get go, that they're they're not going to give you the fair shake. That you it's a done. pretty bad way to start a conversation, right? <laughs> That's the best way to put it. Yeah, you know, it's just it's just it's not 
you know, there's because uh, again, uh, the 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 Hispanic and Latino voter uh, uh, voting block is multifaceted. It's a lot more complicated than I think a lot of people want to uh, uh, make it out to be at first blush. And there's a lot of ways that you can talk to them, including the economy, including uh, family values, right? Like, but yeah. you but if you just start with this, we need to watch out for the other kind of thing. It, it, it's just it, it it's again it, it it it's a messaging thing, and it it speaks to an experience right at, at its very uh, at the very like you know uh, most you know a, a uh, emotional about it and today you know the the and certainly not to say that there's not troubling elements that reverberate into our society or it is dog right. whistling but like it just you got to win right that's the point it, the point is winning win, but it's it's always what comes with being behind the curve of social progress. And, and that's, that's what's hurting the Republicans right now is, is, is being behind that curve. They'll catch up. They'll find a way to catch up at some point. And there will be charismatic and, and effective people that come out of different constituencies that are Republican. But it's not there yet. And they had an opportunity to make it there now. But as I mean, you said it perfectly. It's a terrible way to start a conversation. Where are you at on on some of the uh, the the the, the hand wringing of, uh, of of Trump talking about the rigged voting and and and, and not conceding kind of stuff? I mean, I, it, in a way, it's a brilliant piece of politics because uh, for so long, when 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 people have talked about being the voting being rigged, as we know, it's from the people who have been shut out of being able to vote historically and legally. The black vote, the reintroduction yeah. of the Voting Rights Act, the suppression of voting in the South and in some states, the lowering of uh, early voting, all of these things, that in a way is rigging the vote, right? But they've sort of co-opted this issue and, you know, and created a truth out of out of a falsehood. And, uh, you know, so it's good politics and, and a lot of people. And when you go to these Trump rallies that I've still been fortunate and privileged, I guess, is that the word to go to? <laughs> um, I, I think that I think you'll find that there are people there that think that it is rigged and, and he gets a lot of mileage out of it. But I think on the whole, it's disproven at every at every turn that there is not a rigged election going on. Republicans are saying it. Secretaries of state are saying it. There, it would be hard to to rig this election. First of all, rigging it in a state or a county, or certainly a county possible, a town possible, a state really very difficult, in a country almost impossible. And then when you see how he is losing in states that he should not even, in which the, the Clinton should not even be competitive, the rigging is too far far spread to make it a uh, to make it real. You know, there's there's just no way. Do you are you are, are do you think that it's damaging? That 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 there is that him even mentioning that uh, the the election results uh, would would not be legitimate is something that is staining the fabric of the American democracy. Well, I suspect it's going to be so overwhelming that that cry is not going to be. You know, listen, if in, in a close game, if the ref blows a call and you think, oh, the ref is a homer, right? He's going to always go for the home team. You say, oh, that made a difference. I don't think you know in, in a game with that you lose by thirty and you're blaming the ref kind of tough um, in any sport, uh, but I was thinking of football or basketball. <laughs> 30 goals, you definitely can't blame the ref in hockey. But no. I, so I think I think there's a sense of that. So his demeanor after the election, I don't think will matter because you're going to see Republicans scurrying from him uh, almost immediately um, after he loses. Do you think we get that? That's one of the things that I, I, I absolutely agree with, that I think that we are going to get the pinata season of 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 donald trump and and it will probably happen by dinner time on right. on election day that you know we're just going to get the the they won't be able to line up fast enough in front of those uh cameras to to repudiate right. donald trump that's true and then the this sentence will be said a lot but to his credit governor pence fill in the blank um, or so. Kellyanne Conway. Do you think that Kellyanne Conway? I feel like she's like like maybe the only person that has come out of the Trump campaign that that is is going to be looked at as 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 getting credit for uh, for for being there effectively. When, when, you work, when, when when you work for four candidates in one cycle, eventually you're going to hit right. <laughs> so uh, yeah, she's she. Um, I, I guess so. I, I she's kind of 
But again, you know, she did work for Donald Trump. And so there's a credibility gap that's going to be that's going to hurt all these people at some point. You know, are, uh, if you are. Yes. I mean, the, the people get rehired, bad managers in baseball just to keep this thing going. Just sure. get rehired. Um, new managers Sorry. don't. Black managers don't. Sorry. Um, but but when you see somebody like um, like uh, Kellyanne Conway, you're running for president in 2020. Sorry. Are you going to hire somebody who is associated with the Trump brand? I wouldn't. But. You know, I, I don't make those decisions. Let me ask you one more thing about this, about the Hillary Clinton strategy. Because something that I found very, very interesting coming out of the conventions was that I thought she was playing a fairly risky strategy by making it the total referendum on Trump and making so much of her messaging about the unelectability of, of, of Donald Trump. And now, obviously... In an election where now we are a, a week away and or we can change away and we're seeing Texas in play and Utah might go to a third party and Georgia in play, then she it obviously it worked. Right. I just thought it was risky because at the moments when, you know, Hillary was winning the headline battle, which we have found out in this election is the surefire way to lose the war. Uh, Donald Trump was getting credit for not pooping on the floor. And and as much as I think there was obviously a media expectation that was rewarding him, that was also kind of the standard line from the Democratic camp, uh, convention on forward, was that he was this frothing at the mouth madman. Yeah. Um, I... Yeah, I, I mean, it's hard to say what the good plan was. That's something I guess you do afterwards. I, I think that Donald Trump, by default, you, I think that the people that engaged, I think that the Clinton campaign learned from the Republican primaries. The people that engaged with Donald Trump uh, did not do well, and the people that let him implode tended to do better. Of course, he won, so nobody did better than he did. Um, but I think that if you, in, I think they made a calculation that let this guy be a show that goes under, and by you know by that sense, more people are going to buy tickets to your show, and and I think that's you know you have to say that's worked to a degree, and it's worked because it's uh, you know that she is competitive in places that a Democrat would never have landed a plane in 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 October before an election. So I think that's important to look at. And so I think yeah, I mean I think they did the right thing. Oh yeah, uh, I mean listen, it, it it worked. It absolutely worked. It was just one of those things where it's like if somebody could have put a trank dart. In, in Trump's neck and just like like you know told him to take a nap for two weeks I, I think it, it, it would have been uh, it would have been hard you know because because you, you have to constantly prove it because it, it's such you know if, if all of it all the the national ads are just you know in his own words Donald Trump saying crazy stuff and then you come back from break to CNN and he's saying something reasonable or something you agree with or something populist then it then it immediately undercuts that message. Exactly. Yeah. And so I listen, I, I think that there are other ways to have skinned this cat. That, sure. At this, at this point, this one seems to have been the good one. A hundred. You know. Hey, listen, there's a possibility that along when 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 when, when uh, you know, Paul Ryan and, and, uh, and John Kasich are elbowing each other in the ribs to get in front of the camera first to, to talk uh, noise about Donald Trump. Uh, the other thing that might happen is we might be getting the live shot from Austin, Texas, where Democrats are are, are celebrating a, a win. Now, that is unlikely based on the numbers, but the fact that that's even a possibility is right. just a freak. I mean, like, a Mormon, a Mormon won Texas by 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 16 percent. Like you go to West Texas and, 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 and try to tell us somebody about the Church of Latter-day Saints and see how well that goes over. A Mormon won by 16. <laughs> Very, very true. And listen, the other thing is, no matter the margin, uh, I don't think that, the, that I think this would be a, a it would not be considered a mandate by any chance. And I think the Democrats should know that. I mean, yeah. this this was not people sort of, you know, if, if, even if they win Texas, uh, Hillary Clinton didn't win Texas. Donald Trump lost Texas, if that's the case. Yeah. So I don't you know, I don't know that that's going to happen. But the, so the Democrats have to be very careful not to have that sort of cock of the walk, um, you know, attitude about them when at the, the next day. But. By the same token, it does give them the ability to say, hey, listen, as we govern, we can start engaging people in places we never thought we could. And that's where, you know, you talk about your 50 state strategy or whatever. Yeah. That's how you build. You don't do it in, in ways that are artificial. Um, but if you do have success in places you wouldn't ordinarily have had it, 
by all means try and exploit it because it could it could stay in some places. It's not Texas, but yeah. Although I'll tell you what, if uh, you know, there's there's going to be obviously a a big celebration if Hillary Clinton wins, especially in the fashion that it seems by the numbers that she will on yeah. November eighth. <clears throat> but on November 9th, you know these emails are still going to be there. And, yeah. and, and this FBI investigation, whatever it turns out to be, will likely still be there. And this time, there's, I mean, Donald Trump will probably still be talking because that is kind of the, the, the nature of Donald Trump. But it will be diminished now that he is not in position to be president. And, and that's going to be very interesting. Or CEO, because apparently he's sullied the name so much that people are, are taking it off of some of his properties and nobody wants to stay in hotels called Trump. So you, you want to know what's you want to know what's fascinating about this election amongst the million other things. But I think for political nerds like like me is you've yeah. seen some of the like died in the wool at the barricades, Republican operatives that have broken off from from Trump kind of giving this, I think. Very interesting commentary. Like, Frank Luntz. I cannot get enough of Frank Luntz talking. And that's normally something I would never say in my life. Right, but it's right. like, he's he's got some very interesting stuff to say now. And, and, and the fact that he, I think he knows by his own uh, numbers that Donald Trump is not going to win. Uh, uh, you know, I think he's he's got, obviously, an insight into a conservative voter. And... Uh, you know, he's, it's, it's been, it's been curious. And like, so some of the, one of the things that he said on that topic was that Donald Trump has effectively, and he knows him because he did a lot of polling for uh, Steve Wynn. Right. Uh, that he has effectively changed his brand from high end luxury or more specifically upper middle class people who want to live luxuriously. Right. Right. To pins and buttons. And he'll be able to sell a trillion pins and buttons, yeah. right? But th he's talking to the Shoney's crowd now. A and that not not that there's anything wrong. Hey, listen, man, I sell stickers. I'm all about the $5 price point. But at the same time, like that that is a change for him and that's the reason why, you know, that that uh, Trump hotels are going to be Scion hotels going forward. Right. <laughs> well, just in interrupting for a second. Are there still Shoney's? I think there's still Shoney's. Okay. All right. Um, because, by the way, I'm in the Shoney's crowd, if that's the case. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's exactly right. The transformation of, of citizen Trump after this election will be interesting to see what happens to him. Um, because, generally, I mean, you would think that a run for president would not sort of, you know, diminish who you were. Uh, but this one, certainly, I imagine, professionally, will, will have a you know, be, be very difficult, especially in New York City, where he spends a good amount of his time. Oh, there's Shoney's. And there we go. You know, listen, the, the 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 fresh new menu here at at, at Shoney's, uh, you know, gourmet style salads. Look, Look at, at that. that. Huh? Not gourmet salads, gourmet style salads. Gourmet style salads. <laughs> right. Uh, if they were gourmet, this is how we would make them. But they're not. So they're in the style of. All right. Last question. And listen, we got conservative listeners to this show, conservative viewers to this show, and I'm sure that these kinds of lines of questionings are, are stuff that you can you can just feel free to, to, to cut out when when we are talking about Trump's first hundred days in office after he uh, after he surprises everybody. But I yeah. do want to ask this. Do you buy the TV show thing or the, the TV network, the thing? network thing? Well, I mean, listen, uh, do I buy that, that there's interest in doing it? Yes. Do I buy that it's going to happen? No, I don't. Uh, I don't think it will. First of all, it's a terrible time in business to start a network. Yikes. Uh and uh, as we know, uh, almost intimately, it's hard to keep a s cable station on the air, as I know pretty intimately. And uh, I, so I think from a business standpoint at a time when business is not going to be easy, you know, that's going to be tough. But uh, it might be the kind of thing where he could have some success doing it because of that. That's where his brand is strongest with a finite number of people. We'll know that number of people shortly. Um, but I, uh, the number of people that would tune in to watch something like that, it hasn't launched very well. It looks like it was done. I mean, this is much, much more professional than the Trump network. And, and he's trying to trumpet it as something really huge. But uh, so I, I, I mean, is it, could it happen? Yeah. I mean, if he needs a hobby, but I think he's, he's going to, he's going to need a 
space in which to rehab his image professionally. And I don't think that that's going to be there because I think it, there, it can be too caustic. And he has a lot of people that invested in his companies. And and um, and once his taxes come out, which I guess Governor Pence should be any day now, right, um, we'll see a little bit of, of who he's indebted to. Yeah, I, I have a tendency believe, to, to believe that we will get something, but it's going to be far more along the lines of a Facebook page than than it is a a, a full twenty four hour right, news but network. Here's the thing, Justin. If it's like the Blaze, is that something? Because I don't think of that as something, right? I think that, that some of this really out, way, way, way out, fringe, hard to uh, access stuff isn't substantive. So well, I mean, but 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 the Blaze was. I mean, listen, it really depends on what he wants, right? Because because yeah. because the Blaze was for Glenn Beck a cash out. It was I have right. X amount of people. Uh, uh, you know, do the math on how many people will follow me from Fox News to a pay service, right? Right. You have an outside shot of trying to get it on cable uh, uh, carriage, right? And maybe now even that's slightly different if you can look at these online bundles like Sling TV and PlayStation View and stuff like that. Maybe that calculus changes a little bit. But that was him. That was Glenn Beck saying, hey, look, I need a paycheck going forward. Here's my paycheck because I'm a media professional. I don't know what Trump wants because I, I like I think that there's easier ways for Trump to make money than than cashing out ten percent of his of his followers now. For right? sure, sure, yeah, that's right. Um, and and I, I listen, I, I that's what I mean. I I think that he's not going to do anything that could risk the bread and butter part of his business. And if his investors say enough with this, uh, then you can be sure that he's going to listen to them because he's going to be, you know, I, he would never admit it, but he, in, in a subservient position financially to a lot of people uh, and when it comes to business because he's going to have to start fixing the things in, into which people have already invested money and that's going to be his real estate stuff. And so if, if that's suffering, he can't do a hobby that's going to damage that brand either. He cannot continue either by Facebook or by television to be a professional Molotov cocktail thrower no right? i mean far be it from him to agree with us but i i think that that from you know from afar that's what it would seem like but you know there's there's a lot that seems uh, like it should be that he's gonna run right into the face of so and and done well at certain st- i mean I'm, i haven't been right every time about about trump obviously but uh but i think that when it comes to the business stuff he's going to want to protect that and if this can do harm to it i think people would advise him against it but he's got that ego too yeah yeah oh well, listen i was loud wrong I, I i made i made the declaration after the primaries that i was out of the business of 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 of, of fully doubting donald trump like like you know i, I was not gonna be surprised I will now be surprised based on the numbers if he's going to be able to pull this out because, you know, geez, you know, that's a, that is a real, real, uh, you know, the, the, uh, uh, Philippe Petit who walked across the, the World Trade Center had a more luxurious pathway, uh, than, uh, than, than Donald Trump has to victory on that current electoral map. That's exactly right. <laughs> Agreed. Plus uh, one, as they say. There we go. All right, Michael Shore, uh, I'll tell you what. I, I got one more one-word uh, question for you, and then we'll get you out of here. Which yeah. state, which ruby red state on Election Day does not go for Donald Trump? So I'll leave Utah in there if you if you are indeed a, 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 a – if you, if you are a McMuffin believer – the sign of a true friend is one who uh, who leaves Utah. I'll leave there. the Utah on for you. Um, boy, uh, I I don't want to take that bait. I was just in Utah covering that race, and and I think McMullen's going to win. I mean, that's my really anecdotal, my anecdotal hunch. Talking to people and talking to young voters and in, in, in Provo and in Salt Lake City is that that this guy is um, you know they just don't their families. They're talking about their families, and when. You know, a Mormon student in Provo is talking about his family or her family. It's a bigger family than mine, generally speaking. And so they're saying generally? that they're not going to vote for a Republican, but they would vote for McMullen. Um, but I guess if I was going to take a bite of this uh, contest, I guess I would go to Arizona uh, yeah. as a state that, um, that that that's pretty red. It's been pretty red. And I think uh, I think Clinton could could win that state, which I mean, and just another element of this topsy turvy election Uh likely that Hillary Clinton could win John McCain up double digits. Like, yeah. No, no, just, that's it. Those things are, are amazing. Crazy uh, pants. Stuff, I mean, it's, crazy, it's, crazy, Carolina crazy. Could be the same. Uh, the spread is the, there is not as big. And boy, Marco Rubio's in trouble. 
that 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 race has tightened dramatically. The the Herald for the first time in a long time not going for for Marco Rubio. Not going so, for Marco the Herald, yeah. huh? I didn't I didn't see that. I, I saw. I mean, the the polls there have been weird because you know he was up like five, then it dropped to two. Uh, yeah. But at the same time that it dropped to two, the DNC pulled their money out, uh, and, and then it kind of went back up to five. And now I saw a poll today that was even. So, who knows? Yeah. I mean, I think if there's if there's one, geez, talk about the walking nightmare of, of, a, of, of a of a of a year and a half for Marco Rubio. Like you know, well, can you imagine? I mean, finally going back into the race, and and uh, and then also the high profile that other Republicans have taken in this campaign. And so, if he wants to look at twenty twenty. It, it, you know, it makes it all that more difficult for him. So many people who endorsed him who wouldn't go back. It's going to be hard. I mean, I, I, not to mention the fact that, you know, I am sure there is a moment when he's watching video of Hillary Clinton uh, uh, collapsing, co- walking into her uh, walking into her, her, her van that you could just imagine in in some Rick and Morty alternate universe that he would just have the 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 the, the Instagram of him doing pull ups for his six a.m. workout, you know, in this vastly different uh, uh, election uh, season. Michael, where uh, can people find you? People can find me. I'm uh, I'm covering this election, this campaign for the Young Turks. So at theyoungturks.com, I've, I've been on the road for them. I'm going to be with Donald Trump on election night, wherever that may be. It looks like New York, but now that Clinton's going to be there at the Javits Center, uh, there's new whispering that Trump may be in Florida. Uh, but I'm going to be covering this election for the Turks, and then thereafter, I'm going to uh, I'll be always I'm always a Turk at heart, but I'm I'm going to be looking for uh, another fabulous network job or Justin and I will get a phone call on November 9th from the good people at BitTorrent uh, Live. Who I say, mean, maybe hey. even November 8th or the 7th. Hey, listen, who knows? You know, it, it, it's uh, uh, whatever. I'll, we'll, we'll, I'll text you. I'm sure there's there's <laughs> all, all sorts of fun stuff. Right. Uh, I mean, stuff that we shouldn't even say here about BitTorrent. But, I mean, but, listen, to, at this point, it's like. All I I got, you know, I, I have very sporadic emails from them that, that are still coming from at BitTorrent. So yeah. uh, so there's something something's there. And uh, if they if they have a problem with me joking about it, then they're they're more than uh, free to continue to be a thing and give me money. So that would be great. Uh, as long uh, as they keep it, right? Exactly. So you, you'll be able to see me and Michael on our new show on the Trump Network, uh, you know, uh, after the election. I'm sure it'll be great. <laughs> Uh, uh, Michael, thank you so much uh, for joining me. It was a blast, Justin. Anytime. Thanks okay, a lot. Okay, absolutely. Bye-bye. That, of course, uh, Michael Shore from the BitTorrent uh, News Network, the Young Turks, does so many good things, man. Uh, I really, really love Michael Shore. I know that he is going to be somebody that, uh, for many of you, uh, you know, is, is not your political cup of tea. But here's the one thing that I, I really, really, A, I wanted to focus on, and B, I, I hope that everybody can appreciate, is no matter where Michael is, you know, personally on the political spectrum, that dude knows his stuff. He has a very, very encyclopedic knowledge of presidential politics and politics in general. Uh, you know, I remember hanging around with him during the conventions, and he would just be able to just pick out literally, like, every congressman walking by like you wouldn't even see their whole face it would just be like the eyebrow you are like a wisp of an eyebrow and you're like oh that representative king uh all right you want to know what let's just go ahead and do our emails you know i had this is all right this is real behind the curtain stuff uh i had everything up here uh but then i don't know if you guys heard that in the middle of the interview we wound up having some random music play, and it was a pop-up, an autoplay pop-up. Uh, uh, so I had to I close literally everything before I found it buried behind everything else. So I've, I've, I'm totally screwed here on all of my all of my prep. So you want to know what we will do? Uh, we, we we will do the pole dance to end the show because we will do our mailbag now. Elijah writes, Hillary Clinton, oh wait, no, this is our tortured metaphor. Hillary Clinton is the architect. She's part of an all-encompassing, well-run machine that promises you the same mostly peaceful and mostly stable world that you've been used to. In exchange, she merely asks that you pay no attention to the man behind the curtain and not ask the wrong questions. Also, her humanity is questionable. 
Trump is Agent Smith. The his ultimate goal is absolute power, and he c uh, considers other people to be nothing more than a means to an end. Whatever principles he has are dwarfed by his own ego. He has also seemed to double in strength every time he should have been defeated. That's a good tortured metaphor. I don't see where we get a Neo, but I appreciate Elijah for emailing in. Uh, Tar Kuza writes, I am so happy that Trump is tanking in the polls. What do you Americans not get? The last time you elected a president with a doubtful intellectual capacity, we had the cluster F that is Iraq and the chain of events that led to the creation of ISIS. I am from Zimbabwe, living in Australia, very far from the Middle East, but the slaughter that, uh, that, that that unnecessary invasion caused shook me to the core. Now you want to elect an even bigger fool? Question mark, exclamation point. Russia supports every despotic regime on the planet. An alliance between a Trump administration and Putin would be unthinkable. The U.S. and Russia would team up to create greater misery in the world. Hyperbolic I may be, but please don't uh, let another fool be POTUS. Now, here's a funny thing. I wanted to read this. Number one, to give a sense of what people from far outside uh, America you know, have to say about it. But also, because Tar, homie, what many Trump supporters would tell you is that only one person that you have mentioned is for interventionalist policies. So if you are for uh, 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 the American president not running all willy-nilly into another war, then you should get on the toot-toot on the Trump train, which has no brakes. Oh, by the way, uh, I, I didn't notice this because of the way this formatted, but uh, uh, Elijah, from back to the tortured metaphor, he did mention that we are Neo. We are told that we are the chosen one and only we can stop the enemy. Our power is a gift, and to not use it is just as bad as using it for evil. We help the enemy win if we don't do our part. Also, most of what we think we know about the situation is just injected effortlessly and unfiltered into our brains via the Internet by people we don't really know. Well, Elijah, as one of those people that you probably don't really know, please don't take away my ability to inject my opinion unfiltered directly into your brain. Scott writes, after a lot of thought, I've decided that I'm voting for Gary Johnson. My logic is twofold. First, I live in Western Maryland, which means that I am held hostage by the voters of Baltimore. And it is a pretty solid bet that Hillary crushes there. Second is based on the logic that I can easily vote my conscience because it really does have very little effect. I was tempted to skip the election altogether, but several local elections still matter to me. So there you go. Tim writes, I reluctantly begin this email with a toot toot. If I lived in California, New York, Texas, or some other state that we already knew the outcome, I would have enthusiastically began this email with a puff puff pass to signify Johnson. Instead, I live in Wisconsin, where admittedly Clinton's chances of winning are 87% as I write this. But I voted the Saturday before the first debate. My mother is a town clerk, and I filled out an in-person absentee ballot with her so she knows who I'm voting for. The rest of my uh, family are enthusiastic hill dogs. Arf, arf, arf. They weren't happy with my past support for Gary Johnson. I voted for him in 2012 and during the primary this year with the old argument that a vote for a third party is a vote for Mitt Romney slash Donald Trump. I think my mom has resigned herself to the idea that I'd be voting for Johnson, but I put, could not handle or understand my reasons for voting for Trump. Let me be clear. Donald Trump would make a terrible president, and I don't care. I consider my vote for Trump to be a vote against Hillary Clinton. All the evidence suggests that Hillary will continue the interventionalist programs that kill people overseas. I told you, Tarkusta. I return to the email. I believe she acted criminally with her email server and put our nation's security at risk in an attempt to avoid FOIA requests. Also, as a strong Second Amendment supporter who lived in upstate New York, Oswego in Liverpool get some salt potatoes. For a few years after graduating from college, I've seen the results of anti-gun policies put in place by New York liberals like Clinton. On the other hand, if Trump wins, I believe that he will be uh, fought every step of the way and will accomplish nothing during his presidency. We will once again have a press corps that actually does their job. I guess I'm just sick of career politicians and I want him to burn it all down. I wish I could take credit for this, but conservative blogger Bill Whittle says Donald Trump is the stave puffed marshmallow man. We have chosen the form of the destroyer. Also, maybe if Trump wins, you'll have enough material to keep doing PX3. Will? Will I continue to do PX3? I don't know. I don't know. 
But I've seen uh, I've seen this a lot. Uh, and and Tim, I do not think that you are in any way an anomaly in this election. Sean writes, "Hey, I'm a Utah resident and a Trump supporter. I want I wanted the debate. Uh, I watched the debate in full, and I wanted to tell you how it looked through my eyes. I watched it on YouTube, where the video starts with a 30 minute ad for Hillary Clinton, essentially, which I saw as the Clinton campaign shooting themselves in the foot. I went into the debate with my no ad BS filter on, and it reinforced my perception of Trump as an underdog candidate." This was followed up by Lester Holt drilling Trump the whole time while Hillary laughed as her puppet did his job. I don't think Lester Holt did that bad of a job. I think his, Lester Holt's problem was that you had to rein them in. You had to be na, na, notorious Chris Wallace. You had to be Chris Wallace. Like you had to just shut them down and and move on. But I think that that kind of comes with a previous relationship, which I think Trump and Clinton have with Wallace. Aaron writes, not even a month ago, I was ashamed to even consider voting for one candidate that I didn't know uh, if at the time I fully grasped what was going on in my mind and why I felt this way. Now that I've spoken with others in a number of different settings around my personal decisions, I think I have a better understanding of where my shame came from. My shame came from uh, not having a sound mind or rationality, or didn't come from not having a sane mind or rationality. My guilt was coming from outside sources that weaseled their way through the ever-present holes in my mind where emotion and the politics of division have a symbolic relationship. One feeds on the other. If I feel one way, I know I'm more in line with these people who are, like me, mad, and I build a false sense of confidence around allowing more and more of these memes designed by campaigns to get in like worms and take over my mind. As I write this, I visualize actual parasites fighting for their own lives as my mind builds its rational immunities. If only mental health were that simple. Maybe one day we'll have a better understanding of exactly why we let these things control us. Aaron, thank you. Also, cure all of them. Except for a uh, blue gal in a red state writes, arr, arr, arr. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm a voter in Indiana, and I've got a ballot measure that would in, uh, enshrine the right to hunting and fishing in our state constitution. It states that hunting and fishing will be the, quote, preferred method of wildlife management in Indiana. This would seem to place hunting legally ahead of non-lethal forms of wildlife management, including relocation, fencing, etc., and may interfere in future efforts to find new ways to manage your wildlife. I would urge all Indiana voters to vote no on question one. And you want to know what? I'm going to go ahead and willy-nilly totally agree. I agree. I'm willy. This is one of our willy-nilly endorsements. Politics, politics, politics officially endorses no on question one in Indiana. Unless somebody emails me and says I should endorse yes. In that case, I'll flip it. Clay writes, Hill Dog here. You mentioned that you'll be telling us who you're going to vote for. I'm worried that this is going to be your mic drop before you kill the show. Please don't. This is the only show I listen to that is an obviously liberal slanted, which I really value despite being a liberal. It's an actual discussion. I'm afraid how polarized this election is. If you say you're voting for one major candidate or another, it could ruin what you've built. Maybe that's what you're going for, but I hope not. On a related note, as a left-leaning independent, evangelical Christian Midwesterners, the let's just try stuff and see what works party sounds right up my alley. Sign me up. Clay, I am going to reveal who I'm voting for. I'm going to reveal who I'm voting for on Monday, the day before election day. And... I don't know. I think it's going to piss some people off. I, I did it last year. I, I did it on jury. I revealed who I was voting for. And I, 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 am, I am very much a steadfast believer in the idea that judge me by the content of my work. You know, judge me by the volume. Um, because whether or not you agree or disagree with who I'm going to vote for, you know, that's uh, I want to I want I, I want to prove that you can get somebody who can do both, who can have a political opinion and talk about politics in a way that does not necessarily tilt right or left. Hmm? John P. writes, no arfs or toots in this one. 
Can I just say how much I'm in love with all of you? I love the fact that this is a way that I can legitimately make a living. I love that I can read a phrase. No arfs or toots in this one. Ah! I love it. I don't like any of the candidates. I was reading an article in the newspaper that talked about Hillsborough County, Florida. This area averages a considerably higher voter turnout than the national average, and it's split evenly between Republicans, Democrats, and Independents, and has a disproportionately high number of Hispanic and black voters. But the most interesting fact about it is that the winner of this county has won 19 of the past 20 presidential elections. As someone from upstate New York, go to Dinosaur Barbecue! Where the most Republican votes will always be outnumbered by the Democrats who are voting in New York City, it is hard for me to understand the dynamics of areas like this. Is the county a swing county that determines the winner of swing states like Florida? Is it secretly the only county that matters in the election? Or does the county just coincidentally have a demographic that perfectly reflects the opinions of the entire U.S.? Uh, John, it's the latter. They're not necessarily, they're bellwethers maybe, uh, but they're not necessarily the way that you win an election. So in Florida politics, the way that things normally work, and things are changing, but if you're a Democrat, you have to turn out heavily Democratic counties. They're very, very important for you because by and large, the state by volume is red. So Hillary Clinton, that's why you're going to see Hillary Clinton a lot in Orlando and the surrounding areas, which that's actually a swing county. Orange County is a swing county. Uh, but like Broward County, uh, Miami-Dade, that kind of th those counties, if you do not turn those out in numbers for the Democrats, then you're screwed. Because you need those votes. You need those Democratic. You need those Northeastern uh, 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 expats that are now living in South Florida if you want to win Florida. So, yes, it's a bellwether. No, it's not how you win. Tom writes, I love the politics, politics, politics show and the political surface, uh, circus. I wanted to send you a taste of what George's ballot is like this fall. I think this is a good conversation idea, and I'm interested as to what other states uh, contribute or if there are any Georgians who have alternative takes on my position. The first one is a poorly worded plan to take a cut of all public school budgets and create a fund that will allow the state to take over failing schools. The language is really misleading. Quote, shall the Constitution of Georgia be amended to allow the state to intervene in chronically failing public schools in order to improve student performance? This is controversial even in the GOP who proposed the plan because it has the likely effect of increasing all school taxes and there isn't a system in place uh, to know what to do uh, when these schools are taken over. It is assumed that rather than run the schools, the state will convert them into charter schools. Well, Tom, I would, in I would endorse your position, but you didn't give me the, the number or the ballot number. Come on. I'm sending willy-nilly endorsements. That's the idea. Uh, all right. You want to know what? I'm just going to ask you guys because, again, all of my, all my research just kind of went to poop. So I'm looking through here. Uh, looking for a good. I'm looking for a city um, to, do, to do the pole dance. Let's see if we can find. Oh, how about this one? I think we've already done it before, but we're gonna do it again. What do you say? This is a good this is a good city for this too. How about this? What do you say? We get off the plane. We see a man flipping cards in that desert glittering strip. Because, folks, we're in Las Vegas, and this is a Nevada! Get on the floor if you got that booty. Oh! Oh! Dance, 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 dance. This is a uh, NBC Wall Street Journal Maris poll conducted from October 20th to the 24th with 707 likely voters, a margin of error, 3.7. Jill Stein, don't even show up for your shift. J 
Jill Stein, you're not on the schedule. Jill Stein is not appearing tonight. How about this one? First to the stage with 10 points. It's big. Gary Johnson! He's not a dummy. You're a dummy. And your co-headliners with 43% of the vote. It is Donald J. The Cock Hunter. Trump! Toot toot! Maga, 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 maga. This ain't got no brakes. But tie with 43% of the vote. We have Hillary. Where my hill dogs at? Her, her, her. What y'all really want? Her, her, her. Clinton. We go high. 43-43 in Nevada. That is a state that now Real Clear Politics has Hillary edging, edging, uh, with 2% of the vote. But again, here's, when, when, when I joke about Donald Trump having a, 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 a very narrow path to victory, it's because he's not only got to win Nevada, he not only has to win Utah. He's not only got to win Arizona. He's not only got to win Florida. It's not only he's got to win Ohio. He's got to win New Hampshire. He's got to win all of them, right? Can't lose a single one. And then he's got to flip a blue state. Then he's got to be a play to hate a flip a yeah. Play a hate a flip a yeah. Man, now I'm in the mood for some, uh, for some juvenile. Uh, all right, everybody, that about wraps it up for this edition of the show. I want to thank Michael Shore for joining us. Uh, please go ahead and give him a follow at Michael Shore. That is S-H-U-R-E. And follow his work on the Young Turks Network. You can email theyoungamerican at gmail.com. If you want to email in, you can buy the Contender. Remember, the Contender uh, pins. Man, these like these look so good, man. You're going to be stunting like a million bucks walking into the voting booth if you got this on you. And I'm going to get these out ASAP. We got them in hand. So they're going out today if you order uh, or order it up. That is bit.ly slash voting pin. Bit.ly slash voting pin. You can, uh, the music, of course, provided by Valesco and Trop Killers. Follow me at Justin R. Young everywhere. Uh, continue to hit me up on Snapchat. I love you guys on Snapchat. Download archived episodes of this show at bonerwars.com. Folks, some people talk about politics. Others talk about politics. This is the only show that really talks about politics. We will see you the final countdown next week. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>